I just posted a quick article on uh, dealing with dates, and I thought I'd do a video on the same thing, same subject. So the uh, dates is something to use all the time in database, and pretty much uh, most code at some point deals with dates in some way, whether it's a system time date, whether it's a time zone, uh, but you're going to deal with some kind of dates and times at some point. So PowerShell gives you the simple one, which is your, your get date. You probably know about that one. That's pretty self-explanatory. It just gives you the current date and time. Uh, but you can also pass a date to it in uh, like a string format or an object format, and it will give you the full date. And the reason this is important, because we'll, I'll show later, is it also converts that string to a date time. In this case, I just passed a date string to it, and it added this uh, 12 midnight here. And the reason that's important is because many times you grab dates and times, and you try to do a little bit of math, and you have some fuzziness. This object, we can treat like any other object, and you can do your select object and grab something like the year. Uh, so get date includes the year, includes the month and the day, the seconds, etc. You can grab all of those values out directly. And there's actually even a little bit of a different format you can use. I use this all the time. Is the uh, get date, and you put it in parentheses. Hit the period, and you get that uh, list of values you can grab out of here. So just like I did the select object date or select object year, I can do the same thing here with the year, and uh, it just gives me that those four digits. It's also giving it to me as a single value or a single string. So we can also do things like the uh, yeah day, the hour, all single values. It gives you the number of the month, um, not the name. So in addition, get, get date, it takes that string, and you can do a time on there too. So we can do something like a, a get date and pass it, uh, future date, and we can give it the time. So you can see the format with the dashes, and then there's a the space hours, minutes, seconds. So this will cast it as a PowerShell valid uh, date and time. We can do the same thing with the parameters, or I'm sorry, with the parentheses. Put in parentheses and the same thing comes out. You can grab that day, date, time, day of the week, etc. the same values we, we just played with above that uh, by encompassing this in parentheses. We also run into situations where you have the date string and you have issues with trying to get PowerShell to understand that it is a date. And sometimes it's because you've got pieces, parts, and you need to put together the month, the day, the year, and the format just doesn't work out. I ran into this uh, with a timestamp a couple times. So a solution I found was actually to cast this as a date time uh, data type. You can do that with the date time. Oops. Not data time, date time. In brackets, not the parentheses, the brackets. And then the string after it. And if you execute just that, again, you get this valid PowerShell Saturday, February 13th uh, date time parameter. And this goes for the uh, time too. We can pass the same thing. And once you do that, it uh, has the same attributes. So you put it in parentheses, put a dot at the end of it, and we're back to grabbing the days and the month and the year. And you can grab the millisecond if you want to, now that it's converted to a valid uh, data type that PowerShell recognizes. There is a feature here. Okay, I'll grab this gate, get date. You just type add, and you'll see the list uh, add days, add hours milliseconds, I don't know how many times you're going to use that, minutes, months, seconds, ticks, years. So we can just do something like add days and uh, add you know, five days. 
And uh, we can also subtract five days, same method. And just like uh, up here, we cast this as a date time. It has the same thing. So we can apply these, these same values. We add some hours. A funny thing I ran into, I had a requirement where basically we needed to find out what the last day of the month was, and we need to do that for the current month. So you're given a date, and uh, let's say it's June 12th, you need to figure out what the last day of the month of June is. Basically what we did, we use, I'm going to use January and February because February has only 28 days in it, and that's important. So if we do... A date time on uh, January 30th, let's, let's say 30th instead of 31st. Now we're going to assign that to a uh, variable so we can work with it. And um, then I'm going to add one month to that. Now we can't add one month to that technically because there's no 30th of February. Let's see what we get. It assigns it to February 29th. It can't assign it to 30th, obviously, so it gives us a 29th. So the trick here is the 29th also doesn't exist. So I try 31, obviously. Same thing, February 29th. So that was pretty interesting. The idea was to add one month and then subtract the days so you could get the last day of the current month. So the theory is if you're on the 15th, uh, January 15th, we go to February 15th, and then we subtract the 15, so we end up with the last day of the current month. We're going to assign the full date to this new month value, which is that February 29th. I'll put this on uh, 30. And then we're going to do what we did up above here, and we're going to add, use the add days, but we're going to subtract it. The full date dot day. So now we are um, subtracting. That's what add days is a misnomer, but we're actually using the negative sign. So we're subtracting the days, and in this case, the day is 30 um, from the date. So the, at this point, we know full date has been assigned February 29th, 2052. So in order for you to subtract 29 days, you should end up with January 31st. And we do. So even though there's only 28 days in February. So if I play with this and I go up to 31, still gives me the right last day of January 29th the 29th also gives me the proper last day of January even though there is no February 29th so I thought that was interesting something to think about and if you run into a situation where you need the last day of the month this seems to work. I can't fully explain why, but it does. So the last thing we we'll go over was the time zones. Uh, something else you're going to deal with all the time is the time zones. Uh, real simple, you get the time zone, the current system's time zone, and you can also do a list available. Uh, and the list available will give you everything that PowerShell recognizes as a time zone. And you'll notice that the, the ID is not a number or anything. It's actually the string. So it's a little bit different than a lot of the other uh, commandlets. So we can get the time zone for any of these just by using that string. Uh, you can use get time zone and put it in a string. And that's the time zone for Tanzania. So in addition to that, you can also set the time zone. So there's a set. Now this sets the time zone for the system, right? So I can take something like um, 
I don't know, we'll do Pakistan Standard Time. And we will set the system to Pakistan Standard Time. If I run this, and I run my get time zone, it shows that my time zone is UTC plus 5 in Pakistan. Obviously it's not, I'm actually Eastern Standard Time. So I hope this information was uh, useful. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe below and visit dbtales.com. Thanks.